Well, it may not get reported in the New York Times, but this latest piece of news is certainly getting attention from those of us who live with progressive multiple sclerosis. Hello, and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam. I've been living with multiple sclerosis for 39 years. And I started this channel a few years ago with two purposes in mind. Number one, to inform, to share the information that I find out um, in various publications and websites that bring some trustworthy information and hope to those of us with MS, and also to encourage, which is sort of related. I want us all never to give up hope. And also, in the meantime, while we wait for the elusive cure to take care of ourselves as, the, as best as we possibly can so that our quality of life remains high and our attitudes remain positive. Well, today I wanted to share something that I just saw, and again, in a whole bunch of media outlets, but this time more focused on medical and science news rather than the the general public like the ancient bones video that I did a few weeks ago. But let's take a look and I'll show you what I found. When I saw this topic come up in one of my online newsletters, I went out and did a search to see who all was covering it. And I'm not going to show you everything, but I did find a few sites. Here's the story in Practical Neurology on their website. KYV 101 CAR T cell therapy receives IND clearance to be studied as a potential treatment for multiple sclerosis. And IND stands for investigative new drug. And then here is one pharmaceutical technology on their website. FDA grants fast, tra fast track status to Giverna's multiple sclerosis therapy. Kyverna is carrying out two trials of KYV-101 in lupus nephritis patients. And bear in mind that as you read these articles, it's very clear that Kyverna has already been doing clinical trials on this with other chronic diseases. And fairly recently, they got the green light to go ahead with using it for multiple sclerosis. Finally, we'll look at this one out of multiple sclerosis news today, mainly because I just like the style in which it's written, and the information is pretty much the same across the different articles, but this one is, is readable and gets to the point pretty well. So I thought we'd look at this one a little bit more in, in a little bit more detail. FDA grants fast-track status to KYV-101 for progressive forms of MS newly cleared trial to test cell-based therapy in treatment-resistant patients. And that's the key, too, is that oftentimes our neurologists put us on different therapies trying to find something that will actually be effective. And some folks with MS do really well on the DMTs that have been prescribed for progressive MS. And then there are occasionally people who just don't. It just doesn't seem to work for them. What are their options? Well, what this drug is proposing to do is to be able to, is to be effective for those cases. And as, as said earlier, the, the US FDA has granted fast track status to KYV-101, Kyverna Therapeutics cell-based therapy candidate for people with progressive forms of multiple sclerosis that are treatment resistant. And I just want to mention here that Kyverna Therapeutics is based in Emeryville, California. Just so you know, they specialize in developing pharmaceuticals for diseases that can be rather recalcitrant and hard to treat. It says here that the FDA designation is intended to accelerate the development of therapies that aim to address unmet medical needs for people with serious or life-threatening conditions. Among other incentives, it makes Kyverna eligible for more frequent meetings and discussions with the FDA about KYV-101's clinical developmental plan. 
The award of fast track status allows the FDA's clearance earlier this month of a phase two trial. And there's the number for the clinical trial. So you can go out to the clinicaltrials.gov page, and I will link that down below, to test KYV-101 in people with progressive disease types whose condition worsens despite the use of standard MS treatments. And they say, we appreciate the FDA's support to accelerate the development of potentially life-changing CAR T-cell therapies that could greatly benefit patients living with severe and debilitating neurological autoimmune diseases, Peter Mag, Ph.D., Kyvernas CEO, said in a company press release. This marks another important milestone in our endeavor to change the treatment paradigm with KYV 101, Meg added. Here's the part that's most interesting to us. Developing KYV-101 as treatment for primary progressive MS or secondary progressive MS. And then they talk about what MS is, and I think by now we all know that. But it goes down the second paragraph. Many immune cell types are involved in the inflammatory responses that drive multiple sclerosis. B cells, for example, normally produce antibodies that help fight, help the body fight off infections and other pathogens, but become abnormally primed to attack the nervous system in MS. And this is stuff we've known about before, nothing really new here. But KYV-101 belongs to a class of treatments called CAR T-cell therapies. These essentially involve isolating a patient's immune T cells and engineering them in the lab to carry a man-made receptor called chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR, that recognizes a disease-related target. These cells are then expanded to millions and infused back into the patient to help eliminate that target. In the case of KYV-101, the CAR receptor is designed to recognize the CD19 protein found at the surface of B cells, providing the immune system with the ability to target and eliminate these disease-causing antibody-producing B cells. Now, this is a cool paragraph to me. It is believed that it may take only a single treatment of KYV-101 to provide sustained disease control for people with progressive MS. Now that is pretty amazing if it's true. You know, in some ways, this whole thing kind of reminds me of the uh, stem cell therapy that you basically replace your old immune system with a new one. It's not quite that drastic, but it sounds like it's doing something of the same thing. And it says, the therapy was previously tested in people with B-cell cancers in a phase one slash two trial, and there's the number there, it was found to have anti-cancer effects while having a better safety profile than that seen in previously developed CAR T cell therapies. The upcoming MS phase two trial called KYSA-7 is expected to enroll 12 adults with either primary progressive MS or secondary progressive MS. Eligible patients will not have experienced relapses or active inflammatory lesions in the last two years and will have an MS type that is refractory or resistant to other MS treatments. The trial, expected to run through mid-2027, aims as its primary goal to evaluate the treatment's tolerability at multiple dose levels. So we're at kind of still in safety and efficacy um, territory where we're trying to figure out what's the optimal dose. Researchers also will monitor the therapy's safety and pharmacological properties. Further areas of study are KYV-101's effectiveness at delaying disability worsening and walking function decline and at slowing brain shrinkage, a sign of neurodegeneration. Now, all that sounds really good. KYV-101 also is being evaluated in a phase two study involving people with lupus nephritis, another autoimmune disease, and trials are also being planned for people with systemic sclerosis and myasthenia gravis. So this one drug may be of use across the board, which would be a real boon, I think, because 
it's looking at diseases that are rather difficult to treat successfully and for which there's no cure right now. I also found this article posted on a website, Multiple Sclerosis and Related Disorders. It's about a year old. It's February 2023. But I think it's very useful because it addresses the question of whether CD19 targeted CAR T cell therapies are ready for prime time, basically. Are they a good thing for MS? And of course, I got interested when I saw the author. You might think that all I do is go out and follow everything that Professor Giovannoni does, but I don't, actually. It's just that his name pops up all the time, and it's really kind of neat to see. But this was published, like I say, about a year ago. I'll put the link below. But I want to share what he has to say. The recent CD19-targeted CAR, or chimeric antigen receptors, T-cells trial in systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, is not only a potential game-changer for the management of SLE, but it is highly relevant to MS. Autologous CAR T-cells are T-cells harvested from an individual patient's peripheral blood, genetically engineered outside the body to express an artificial T-cell receptor that typically targets a self-antigen, in this case CD19 that is expressed on B-cells, then infused into the patient. CAR T-cells then find CD19 expressing cells and kill them. Using the military analogy, genetically engineering these cells is like brainwashing your T-cells to become assassins with only one mission to go around the body and kill one particular type of cell. In this case, it is the B-cell. You know, it's interesting because it's sort of like what they told me about Copaxin when I started that, although the opposite. What they said Copaxin seemed to do was to turn the T-cells from attacking to being kind of benign. This is doing a, kind of the opposite, but in a very targeted way. So interesting. I think there's a lot of similar biochemistry going on here, way above my level of knowledge, but still quite interesting. And they say that the reason why anti-CD19 CAR T cells are better than anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody therapy is because they can penetrate the deep tissues and presumably the central nervous system and kill the B cells in the brain, spinal cord, and meninges. Remember that the meninges are that membrane that surrounds the brain. CD20 and CD19 targeted monoclonal antibodies are too large for a sufficient amount to get into the CNS or the central nervous system because of the blood-brain barrier to clear the CNS of B cells and plasma blasts. There's definitely some words in there that bear looking into, but I think you get the idea. It's a superior technology to what they've had in the past, and at least in this article, Professor Giovannoni is expressing a, a lot of interest in it. Well, I wanted to know a little bit more about how CAR T cell therapy actually works, and I could not find any good simple videos about how it works for MS, but I found this one from a few years ago about how it works for cancers, which is where it was really developed for in the beginning. And I thought there's some good information in here, not just about how it works, but also some of the side effects. CAR T uses our body's natural ability to detect specific proteins that help them identify and tag cancer cells. By tweaking the T cells so that they recognize specific proteins, Researchers have been able to train a patient's own immune system to identify and eliminate their cancer cells. Here's how it works. A doctor will take some blood from the patient and isolate the T cells from the rest of the fluid. In a lab, these cells are modified to look for and kill the patient's cancer cells. The newly armed T cells are then put back into the patient's blood, where they go to work knocking out the bad cells. It is important to note that CAR T therapy is given only once, and it is expensive. One treatment is priced at $373,000, the other at $475,000. As with most cancer treatments, there can be side effects. Some of these can be life-threatening. Doctors are learning how to manage these side effects, but it's still not fully understood why they occur. CAR T doesn't work for everyone. 
but there is no question that it is a significant advance in how we treat cancer. Just as we say, every silver lining has a cloud. There may be a cloud right here with using some of this new technology. Well, it's possible that some of you have been following this CART technology as it's evolved over time and the possibilities that it might have some application in multiple sclerosis. It's high time that we started to see some things that were targeted specifically at the progressive forms of MS. I was very encouraged, too, to see that Dr. Giovannoni had good things to say about this type of technology in general. Now, what will come of this is anyone's guess, because as you can see, the clinical trials, are, at least for MS, are in their very early stages. But I will be paying attention to this issue and certainly keep you posted on whatever I find. And in the meantime, you know, my encouragement to you is that you take really good care of yourself and I'll see you again in my next video.